Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to make a Lenten chaffle. Now, I don't often take requests for recipes much anymore, and if I do, it usually takes me a really long time. I almost feel like I should have done that in the voice of the most amazing man or most interesting man in the world from the Dos Equis commercials. I don't often take requests, but when I do, it takes a very long time. Eat keto, my friends. Okay, that might have been a little self-indulgent. But earlier this week, one of my viewers said, hey, it's Lent. Could you do something for Lent? Something seafoody?" And I do have a few seafood recipes, which I will link to as part of the end card to this video, one of which is a crab cake chaffle. But based on the price of lump crab meat these days, unless your last name is Bezos, you're probably not making that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make a tuna melt chaffle. Like most chaffle recipes, this is easily scalable, so if you want to do them in bulk, you can. Also, it seems like the yield on this recipe is a little bit more than two chaffles. So if you've got the dash no mess and you're scaling this up, I think a double batch is going to work perfectly in that. Aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. So let's get to making it. When making chaffles, I like to use a little food processor here. It really helps bust up the cheese with any dry ingredients. The first of which is my almond flour, one tablespoon or six grams. Then I have my one quarter cup of sharp cheddar cheese, that's 20 grams. I'll pop on the lid here and then pulse this six to eight times. That's six to eight, not 68. I like my cheddar crumbs to be about the size of panko breadcrumbs. This helps ensure that the cheese blends nicely and doesn't wind up leaking out of my Dash Mini. Then I've got one large egg, one half teaspoon of lemon juice, one quarter teaspoon of minced garlic, a few grinds of salt and pepper. Then I'll pop my lid back on and give this a nice blending. Probably only take about 10 seconds to make sure that everything is fully blended. For the rest of this recipe, you can use a mixing bowl or Pyrex measuring cup. The reason I do this is I don't want the rest of my ingredients getting pulverized. Then we have one can of tuna. This is 4.5 ounces or 128 grams. I'm not sure what the standard is, but I know once I've drained it, it's down to 3.7 ounces or 105 grams. I'm going to use a fork to kind of bust it up and scoop it out simultaneously. And then he cleans because cats. One half tablespoon of finely chopped dill pickle, one half tablespoon of finely chopped red onion, one tablespoon of finely chopped celery. Mix this together with a fork or spatula until all of our egg mixture is completely incorporated. And then we'll set this aside while we warm up our Dash Minis. Now because this is thicker than traditional chaffle batter, we need to really kind of distribute it the best we can before we close the lid. Don't load it too front heavy though, because if it's going to leak, that's where it's going to happen. Once we get it distributed fairly well, hold down the lid for, I don't know, three, four seconds, just to kind of push the batter to the edges. We'll repeat this with our second dash mini. Press down, and we'll let these cook for about five minutes or until there's just a whisper of steam coming out. Our first chaffle looking very good. Nice color on that. The second chaffle, I did get a little bit overzealous in filling. I'm going to have to clean those edges up for the thumbnail. Overall, color looks good though. You can serve these any way you want, but I'm going to make a sandwich, starting with a little homemade mayo and I'll link to that video right there. Spread that on. And a little bit of avocado. Looking nice. Some tomato, if you don't mind a, another carb or two. Then for the sake of the thumbnail, little lemon, little cheddar. Snap a picture and have a taste. Here we go.
I think the only thing that I would add to this maybe is another slice of cheddar, but wow, this is a really good little sandwich. In terms of the macros for this recipe, it's a little higher on protein than you typically see in keto, but that's okay. We can always up the fat by adding some mayo and avocado, but you're looking at four total grams of carbs for the entire batch, three grams net, 34 grams of protein, and 16 grams of fat. Anyhow, it's not a glamorous recipe, but it's easy, it's scalable, it's something that you can eat for lunch. Actually, you can eat it whenever you want. I'm not gonna dictate. What I am gonna ask though is that if you enjoyed this recipe, please click that like button. Did I say recipe? If you enjoyed this recipe, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button down there right next to subscribe and see what perks you can get with channel memberships. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.